Hello again. I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com. About a year and a half ago, I bought one of these standard coloring notebooks to start swabbing my rapidly growing ink collection. And about six months later, when it was nearly used up, I thought to myself, if I can find a paper that matches this stuff, I can just add a few more extra swabs in here, and then I won't need to buy another one. So in an act of unbridled optimism, I bought this pad of paper, a Canson Bristol pad of smooth 100 pound pen and ink paper, which is a perfect match to the stock paper in the original color ring. And I did add a few more swatches to my existing little binder. And then I just made an additional one. But as I was doing so, I started wondering, why am I swatching my ink on 100 pound art paper? I never write on it in real life. Wouldn't it make more sense to swatch my ink on papers that I actually use? That seems a lot more practical to me. So that is why I started buying extra pads of Rhodia paper and some of my other favorite brands to start making my own swatch rings. I started with an A4 size Rhodia pad with blank paper but then decided I wanted to do a dot pad too. And these stapled A5 sized ones are really easy to unstaple and they become A4 sized pages when unfolded. Now, I'm not going to insult your intelligence with a full tutorial on how to make these. If it isn't immediately obvious how to do it, you probably have no business using the internet without supervision. And to be clear, I'm not even suggesting that you should do this. It's really just another symptom of my current ink mania. But the obvious first step is cutting the paper into two by four inch pieces. I used this $10 Amazon paper cutter to make it faster. And I taped down a couple of coins as a fence so that there wouldn't be any variation in size. Then I rounded the corners with one of these devices that are used for scrapbooking and crafts and such. And it's a little slow because I can only do four or five pages at once. And then of course, there's the hole punch. I use this two hole punch, which has a handy fence built in, so it's easy to center. And it can also handle a pretty thick stack of paper. Cutting up the covers of these A5 notebooks gives you a nice logo for the front to help you keep track of what paper you're using. And you can use a blank piece for the back. Or use one of the other little printed elements if that makes it feel a little more finished to you. Of course, there will be some paper scraps left over, and those will be handy for a variety of different things. Maybe chromatography, writing very small notes to send by pigeon, destroying household pests. So in addition to the Rhodia paper, I decided to go with some Clairefontaine Triumph and Tomoya River, and I also used some HP Premium 32 printer paper Now, some of you will surely be asking, why didn't you just use the whole notebooks to swatch your inks? Wouldn't that be a lot less work? And the answer is, of course, that it would be. But I really like being able to take out these swatches to compare them. And I also like to organize my inks in them by color, which isn't really possible with a standard notebook. Or at least, it would take an awful lot of planning. Anyway, if any of you found this sort of thing interesting or useful or mildly amusing, I hope you'll take a second to like this video and maybe subscribe to my channel. All right, everyone, enjoy your pens and ink out there and don't forget to actually use them.